Before any of you guys say anything, I'm aware that I'm sweating bullets out of every pore in my body. It is 90 degrees in this studio. Now, I also wanted to cover this in this video, which is uh, Sean Strickland uh, breaks the ribs of a power slap fighter. <laughs> Let's watch this, dude. Sean Strickland beats up a power slap contestant. Strickland made an appearance on the most recent episode of the reality show, Power Slap Road to the Title. He asked the group of power slappers working out at the facility if anyone wanted to box. The former middleweight champion usually gets flagged for going too hard during sparring sessions, which is exactly what happened in the case of Colton Cole. The Power Slap League contender accepted Strickland's invitation to some spar boxing and got beat up so bad that he was removed from the competition after suffering broken ribs. Oh, dude. So the guys ran into Sean Strickland at the gym and Colton took the opportunity to spar. That is so fun. With Strickland in the boxing ring. Absolutely stupid. <laughs> Oh Why would you hit him that hard? Horrible decision. He's hurt, and now he has to be removed from the competition. Dude. Listen, I love Strickland, dude. I love Strickland. And I, honestly, I actually understand why he did this. I would imagine if it was me and, well, I'm not, not if it was me, but like if I'm putting myself in his position, here's exactly what I think happened, dude. I bet you that Strickland has been watching these power slap guys and he's just like, these guys aren't athletes. These guys aren't fighters. And so once he got his hands on one of them in the octagon, like he, he kind of baited one into boxing. He's like, let's see what you got, dude. And so he beat him up, but he broke his rib, dude. That's, gosh, man. First of all, guys, Okay, I understand everybody wants to show you know man up or whatever, and like, dude, that's I'm not. I would I would spar certain guys that are in the UFC. I know I'm gonna. You know you're gonna what? I was gonna say lose. Oh, you about to lose? I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna beat a UFC fighter in a sparring match. Like, what are we talking about? Well, you're right, you're not. So why don't you guys subscribe to the channel since you feel so bad for the hypothetical Jesse on fire that's gonna get beat up by a UFC fighter? Hit subscribe and like this video. It's it's one of those things where like, dude, I'm gonna go at regular speed to like people are going to match your output generally speaking right like people are going to match your output so you can kind of it's like flow rolling dude it's you know you're you're, you're not ex if you if you roll with like a world champion you're not expecting them to like go full throttle and you know heel hook you you know you're like you're just going through whatever so do the exact same thing sparring and you don't you don't go full throttle on that the second that someone goes heavy on them then you know uh no more crybaby like the guy in that video of Pereira the other day where the dude is sparring Alex Pereira all of a sudden started throwing bombs at him Pereira you know hit him with a pretty good left hook and the guy's all oh okay that's it it's like yeah no shit dude what did you think was going to happen there guy but I mean I don't know dude strictly he these, these power slap guys broke the guy's rib it's uh I don't know. I don't love that, dude. I mean, I don't... You know, it's Sean Strickland, dude. He can say and do whatever he wants as far as I'm concerned. But, uh... I don't know, man. I don't love him breaking this dude's ribs. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, now the guy's... Like, this was probably a really big deal to this guy. You know what I mean? Like, the fact that he was in the power slap thing is probably, like, a really big deal to him. And now he's out. You know? I don't know, dude. That just seems, uh... I'm sure... I don't know. I don't think Strickland, you know, broke his rib on purpose. But... I doubt, like, Strickland thinks it's, like, that big of a deal, and I bet it's a pretty big deal to that guy. You know, he was on the Power Slap show, and I can tell you as a person who has done reality shows, like, when you're, you think of it as a really big deal. You know, you're going to be on TV, you never know where it's going to lead, whatever, and now he has to get removed from the show. I'm sure he's super bummed, dude. Strickland should get him some tickets to a fight or something, would be my suggestion. If I was, if I was Strickland's teammate, I'd be like, dude, just get him tickets to a fight, man. You broke his ribs. You took him out of the slap thing, dude. He's an idiot for getting in there with you, but you're the middleweight champion, I think. You know, I think he should still be the middleweight champion. Like, this guy does not belong in there with you if you're going even 50%, 40%. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, so there's that story. <laughs> now let's talk about uh, Joe Rogan going off on fighter pay, son. I'm looking forward to doing this one. Joe Rogan gets honest about the UFC antitrust lawsuit. So before I even watch this, I hit record because I definitely wanted to hear what he said and react to it because I am a person who has a lot of thoughts about this particular lawsuit. And uh, 
I honestly wanted to just do it on the spot. I wanted to hear what Rogan said and react to it. And I haven't even decided which channel I'm going to put this on. But uh, I want to give you guys a very natural, on-the-spot reaction. So let's do it. Joe Rogan gets honest on the UFC's antitrust lawsuit. For years now, fighters like Kung Lee and Nate Query have been bankrolling a lawsuit against the UFC. The suit accuses the promotion of purposely keeping down fighter pay through anti-competitive tactics. These tactics include buying out competition and controlling market prices for top fighters in the sport. If the UFC loses the trial, it could pay up to $1.6 billion in damages to over 1,200 fighters who competed between 2010 and 2017. UFC brass has been mostly silent about the lawsuit, with the exception of a recent comment from Dana White. Now, on his JRE podcast, Joe Rogan made a comment about the upcoming trial, saying, They're definitely the best at it, but here's the problem with the monopoly argument. You can make that argument with the NBA, you can make that argument with the NFL, you can make that with Major League Baseball. Well, they bought out the competition, which is definitely true. Okay, what's the difference? What's the difference between those uh, between those uh, comparisons? NBA, MLB, NFL, what, what is different for the athletes in those situations versus UFC? Do I even need to say it? It's obviously player unions, right? player unions it's the same as like the screen actors guild where actors get to control you know like they just collectively bargain you got a bunch of spread spread out fighters they have no leverage individually none the only people who get any leverage are people with tremendous market value on their own if the fighters unionized they would have a bunch of a uh, bunch of leverage but it doesn't seem like that's very likely to happen because if anybody tries to organize you know, if you're the UFC, you're going to punish them or bribe them by paying them an incredible amount of money. And they're like, all right, well, this is an individual sport. This is my family. I'm going to take that money. Let's continue. They bought out Affliction. They bought out Strike Force. No, it's not illegal. They do it in everything. In some businesses, they will break you up if you have a monopoly. And it seems to be connected politically. Like, how much money are you donating to the Democratic Party? Okay. And also, it's not a monopoly because PFL exists. Uh, one FC exists, right? Um, I mean, they do listen like I, again, I, every time I talk about this, I say the same thing. I am not saying that fighters are like all being super fairly compensated or whatever. All I'm saying is the monopoly conversation is, I don't know. I, and technically they're calling it a monopsony, which is there's no competition, you know, like it's not a monopoly because they can't claim a monopoly because those other organizations exist. And they did, you know, listen, dude, if Strike Force and Affl Affliction, dude, Affliction did one show, right? Like these, these organizations are not making money, right? Like the real complaint here is that the UFC, they're saying the UFC is making too much money, right? Because when they complain, they're like, oh, well, I can make so much more money in Bellator. Okay, well, Bellator just got bought for zero dollars. You know what I mean? Like they got bought for zero dollars. So there, I mean, there is a way to get more money for the fighters. I'm only talking about like the basis of this of this lawsuit that like that they're a monopsony or whatever that is and that's just like not accurate. How much money are you donating to the Republican Party? How much money do you spend on whatever programs they want? Whatever this, whatever that, whatever foundations you have to play this game. Still, if people complain and a lawsuit comes about, there is this possibility that you could be a monopoly, but there's a lot of monopolies, man. Like, yeah, that's a great point, dude. And and here's uh, here's the other part of that is like, because the point that that he was making is like, if you're donating enough money to the politicians, then they'll protect you from these monopoly conversations, which is obviously a hundred percent accurate. Um, but listen, dude, when it comes to the, I mean, there's really honestly like nothing else to say about this topic other than without collective bargaining no athletes were being compensated fairly the nba fighters or i'm sorry nba players are making so much money it's ludicrous guys are making 60 million dollars a year in mlb too it's crazy dude and that would have never you really you think there's any scenario where baseball players would have been getting paid anywhere near that and so what changed they unionized and they collectively bargained. And you, you know, that's, that's extra challenging. That's extra challenging for the fight business because you are naturally like combative against these guys that you're competing against, you know? 
And what out of one side of your mouth, you're like, I'm going to crush that guy. I'm going to take everything that's his. I'm going to take his soul and I'm going to eat it. And then you're like, but hey guys, let's, uh, let's get together and work on this together so that we can get what's fair. I don't know. It's a really complicated issue. Uh, every time that I've looked at the details, it's like, I mean, I can, I completely understand what, what they're saying, but the main problem is only that they were locking guys into contracts. I mean, that's essentially what they're saying. But the, let me, you know what? Let me double click into that actually. So one of the main things that I think is a reasonable argument is they're like, they lock them into these impossible contracts to get out of. And you're like, all right, well, but they are agreeing to them, all right? They are agreeing to those contracts, right? Even with the extensions and all that stuff and they make it really, like they have agreed to those contracts. But let's just say, that, okay, that's unreasonable. They should have a limit for how long they can lock people in. Okay, cool. Well, if you're saying that that is the reason that none of these other organizations can compete, you are saying that the only reason that the UFC has succeeded the way it has is just due to having access and control of the best and most marketable athletes, which is absolutely ridiculous and not true. It's just not true. It's not true. Because the majority of these athletes became stars because the UFC has built this machine that creates stars. You know what I mean? Like, think about it like this. Why is there no Conor McGregor in Bellator? Why is there no Conor McGregor in 1FC? Why is there no Nate Diaz that has exclusively come up in one of these organizations? Because they don't have the they don't have the marketing vehicles to create stars. PFL, you have all the money in the world now. So just go create a, oh my God. Look at me just sweating bullets. Do you have any idea? Like, you see that? If, if anybody's like, dude, you look hot. It is, I, it, I'm, I've been up here filming for two hours. It's 90 degrees up here, dude. It is 90 degrees up here. So don't break my fucking balls on that.